So, just about sailing October. Uh, there will be another one out in October because I've very nearly finished the hatch, but I thought we'd have something that was a bit different from DIY this time. So this is a tour, a quick look at the um, Southampton Boat Show. Bought a present for Serenity, which I got fitted and I'm very pleased with. And then fun with flags. Something I've wanted to do for a very long time. So here we go, it's September, and September means the Southampton Boat Show. See what goodies they've got in here this time. <laughs> this is the nice thing about Southampton, they've got this big floaty area. And there's the University of Southampton's smaller oceanography boat. What a lovely day. September. Right. Daughter wanted to go on a pirate ship mm -hmm. and this thing is absolutely gorgeous. And she's just said, Dad, do you want to build a pirate ship for your next project? And my current time frames, that would actually take about 375 years. It is pretty though. Gosh, look at all that wood and I can't even varnish the tiny bits of wood inside my boat. Oh well. Right, now I would like a windlass and this one looks just the job. For scale, there you go. That would suit. I think Serenity would sink if I put that on it. Right. So this is Scaramouche, and you will have probably seen this on Uma. And I'm pretty sure this is one of the old clipper boats that, and is what I actually did my original day skipper. In fact, it was watch leader on, and there were just four of us. But it's a lovely, great <laughs> boat, um, which apparently handles, handles like a sailing dinghy. But given I've never tried a sailing dinghy, I really wouldn't know. <clears throat> and these things come remarkably close to um, where the showboats are. Lots of expensive catamarans you wouldn't want to pump into. Here's a lovely boat, lively lady. I, the more I see them, the more I kind of like these um, classical boats. And she's not particularly big, but hidden behind it is Suhali, who's the boat that I've really come to see, so I'm going to go and have a look at that in a second. Right, so here she is, and for me this is literally the only boat in the show. This is the boat that Sir Robin Knox Johnson went round the world in 1969, won the Golden Globe. Um, and it's also been to watch it harbour, because I think he actually officially opened it. And he still sails it, and it's gorgeous, so I'm going to have a close look at it. And I can't believe it's not teeming with people, but what a... Fabulous boat she is. Fabulous. Right, look at all these flags. So, wait on, later in this video we'll talk a little bit more about flags. Right, so this is the Habitant. I unfortunately forgot to bring the um, proper measurements down, so I don't know which one fits. But the guy is very kind and he will stick to the show price. So this goes on the... I'll just cut that bit out, a very loud motorcycle went past. This looks pretty good, so that's, that's, in, that's instead of a sort of Bimini type thing. So yeah, it's a very good price. Nice big quarter berth here, escape hatch. Am I on a catamaran? What sort of boat is this? Very decent head. So there you go. Good wave, Lucy. It's a square boat. Just about to switch this on. This is, this is caught at it again. Remember where they were at the London Boat Show? The Champagne Bar, not where we'd arranged to meet. Oh well. 
Right, so the Tuesday after the boat's show finished, I found the piece of paper with the measurements on it, emailed across the chap. Um, so that was on the Tuesday. Put the order in. First thing Thursday morning, here we go. A box with a happy tent, or happy tent as I think I might start calling it. So let's take it down to Serenity and get it fitted up, see how well it works. All right, so just opened the bag and there are a few more straps and things in there. And what's particularly clever, this is obviously designed for people like me, is the instructions for putting it up and taking it down are actually stitched into the bag because I always lose instructions. So um, 10 out of 10 so far and there it is ready to be put up. Right, so having said the instructions are easy to get at, this looks so simple, I'm going to try this without reading the instructions first because it's always a nice challenge. So you get these wonderful adjustable poles which go out the back and then these bits of aluminium which obviously fit into it. So at this stage I'm not kind of committing to anything which is why I've got kind of webbing straps going all over the place because ultimately I want to put sort of eyes and things in the right place so that it's easier for permanent mounting but I think this is going to work well and the boom will actually go along the top by coincidence it's pretty much exactly the same height as the new Dodger so it's going to work out okay I think so this is jolly pleasant it's a sunny but cold day and I'm not cold at all in this effect I'm in a t-shirt so I've got the one of the sides rolled out I've got the um, the window there that I could make that into a mosquito net I need to do a bit of adjustment in the corners. There is a, a way that you can adjust it just here um, and I've made it so that it kind of curves round um, and I had it too tight just now and now I've made it too loose um, and then on this side I've got it closed to stop the wind coming in. It's the only test that counts. Can you sit in it comfortably and have a cup of tea? Yes you can. So I'll include a link below uh, with how to fit it from the actual Habitant people because it was so easy to put up, it, it was literally 20 minutes. Little bits of fine tuning, because there's so many adjustments everywhere, and I want to get it adjusted exactly right for my boat, so that then I can just sort of put it up, and I might make a few little permanent clips and things, but fabulous, couldn't be happier. Fun with flags, let's have a look at this last little section. Um, had meant to get a full set of signal flags, because uh, I think this is an important subject and my daughter was very, very keen, as you'll be able to see, to actually have a go and, and do this. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get a single flag, so we had two, we only had two flags. And then I realised that she was actually off fairly quickly, so we didn't have much time to do it, so we had to kind of improvise it a bit. But despite that, hopefully you will find the next bit incredibly educationally valuable, because flags are, flags are important. I mean, fun with flags, but they, they are important. Right, fun with flags. This is the first one of a series of one. So if you missed this one, you've missed this one. And I've got my assistant, my daughter Lucy, to help me here today. I've been wanting to do this for a very long time. Um, so what we're going to do is just going to talk about flags, curtsy flags, signal flags, ensigns and so on. I might get some of this wrong, and I'm also doing it from a UK perspective. So if you've got comments that you think stuff that I've said is wrong, or it's different in your part of the world, then we'll carry that on. Also, there's no budget for this, and I've actually forgotten. I should have a thing at the back saying fun with flags, shouldn't I? So I will actually put something on a piece of paper and add that later. And I've only actually got two flags, but I want to cover several different ones. So we're going to use some green screen technology. Daughter very cleverly got me to change out of my green t-shirt when I was going to do this. Otherwise, it could have gone all wrong. So let's start off with a very basic flag from the UK. Let's start off with the Union flag. This is going well, right. <laughs> this is the Union flag, also known as the Union Jack, and yes you can call it the Union Jack even if it's not at sea, because in 1909 I think, was it 1909? Mm -hmm. She doesn't know. They actually said you can call it the Union flag and the Union Jack, but protocol is normally call it the Union flag when it's um, land and Union Jack when it's on the boat. This is not the flag that we use as the ensign, and this is not the flag that you should use as a courtesy flag if you've um, come into the UK. This flag is actually made out of four different flags. So on the other side of this, we've got the... <laughs> uh, we've got the Scottish flag. And on the other side of it, 
<laughs> we've got the English flag. And then what was added at a later date, on the other side, we've got the <laughs> St. Patrick's flag. It's, it's never flown, never flown on its own. And you, what you will have noticed is that there isn't a flag for the Welsh flag, which is there. <laughs> if it doesn't work, it's pointless, isn't it? So do you want to put that Welsh flag down now, then? So what should you show as, a, as, as an ensign if you are a British ship? It's The common one is the red ensign, so this is the one that you'll see me be flying. It's the ensign obviously gets flown from the, um, the back of the boat. Um, I won't go into all the different combinations, it's different if you're a schooner or a gaffery boat or whatever. And what this does is this is what you should fly uh, when you're going into foreign ports. This gives you protection under British law, British maritime law, so that's the reason that we actually fly this. If I fly anything else from the back, from the position where this is supposed to be, that's completely unofficial, like one of the special ones, uh, which we'll have a look at later, um, I can get an unlimited fine. You cannot, for example, fly one of the individual, you can't, can't fly the, the, the England flag, the Scottish flag, etc. from, from here, because that would be wrong. Can you speak faster? My hands well, are Right, let's talk about courtesy flags a bit, because I mentioned courtesy flags. A courtesy flag is what you fly when you go into another country after you've obviously done put the Q flag up and it should fly from the starboard um, flag halyard which is normally up by the, the, the cross trees um, and some people particularly in the UK will actually fly the Welsh flag or the Scottish flag or, or whatever so let's just have a look at the Scottish flag <laughs> Magic. So if you fly this from your starboard flag halyard, that is also the signal position. So you are signalling, and what you're signalling with the Scottish flag is, I am stopped and not making way through the water. So you're actually giving a false signal there. So you should never fly one of the individual country flags or anything else that's not a proper signal flag from the signal area. If you do want to fly something, you should perhaps fly it from the port flag halyard. The only thing that I can fly from the port halyard, which isn't used for a lot, is my RYA flag. Which is that one. And next year I'm upgrading to a gold one. There's a dead spider on the back of it. This hasn't been used a lot, there is a dead spider on the back of the flag. <laughs> this is so professional. We're going to have a little quiz at this point. So what Lucy's now going to do, and I'll, I'll put them up on here, which one she's showing me, is see if you can beat this. So you'll shuffle them up and just choose ten at random. So choose ten. Up. Just take ten up. Just up. Top ten. ten. Just top ten. Okay. So that is India, which means I'm altering my course to port. Yes. Well. Can you do a little ding at the bottom? I can oh, do. Oh, I can do a little points thing. That's complicated. I don't know. So play at home, by the way. You can pause and play this. That one is one that I always get wrong. It is. I think it might be uh, Echo, which is I'm altering my course to starboard. Yes. Good grief. That's two up two so far. That one is Quebec, we've covered this already, it's commonly known as the quarantine flag, but it's actually saying my vessel is healthy and I require free pratique. It's also inviting people to come on board your boat. There was an incident in the paper a few years ago, somebody put up the Q flag and they were very surprised when somebody came on their boat and discovered the drugs they were smuggling, so that's the Q flag. Is that correct? Yeah, a shorter, a much shorter version of that is correct. Uh, are you counting Harry Butler? That's three, four. Uh, this one is, oh crikey, um, it's not crikey, no it's not crikey, I know what it means, it's Sierra isn't it, mm -hmm. and it means I'm running my engines astern, yes, doesn't mean I'm going backwards, because as we all know if you're caught in the Bristol Channel you can be, your engine can be on backwards at full speed and you still go forwards, so it's just my engines are in run, yeah, number five, that's golf, which means I request a pilot, or if you see a fishing boat flying it, it means I am 
retrieving my nets. Hauling nets, but... Yeah, hauling nets. Insane. Number six. That is... Kilo. Right, this is the one that if you go to a nightclub and you're trying to chat somebody up, you should carry a kilo flag because it actually means I want to communicate with you. So right. everybody can run away from you. Yeah, and, and if, you actually, if, you, if you're if you trying to chat somebody up and you put the kilo flag up and they don't understand it, they're probably not the sort of person that you'd want anyway. If someone put up this flag, they're not the person I want to talk to anyway. See, so it works both ways. It does. Yeah, Great. so there you are. Hotel. Um, mean, means two things. It either means I have a pilot on board or it's the flag that a pilot boat will fly. Is that right? It just says I have a pilot on board, but okay. I'll bow to your theory. How many have we got to so far? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, three more. Oh, right, we've covered this one anyway. This is the. Um, let's not include that because that's Scottish flag. That's Lima. It's very important. It means. Stop immediately. Yes. <laughs> Simple. No. Ah, anybody, any child who's of about, or anybody who's about my age was a child. This is the Blue Peter, other than I was known as Papa. Um, it's not a picture of a blue boat, it's this, and it actually means um, all persons should report on board because we're about to go to sea fairly soon. So this is what the if you miss your boat, you miss your boat. And if you're a fishing boat, it means I've got my net stuck on something. Yes. Super. That's right. This is the last one. And this is... <coughs> Zulu? Yeah, that's one. Which means... Um, oh, what does Zulu mean? Hang on. It means... Zulu, Zulu, Zulu. I request a tug. Mm -hmm. And if I'm a fishing boat, it means I am shooting nets. Mm -hmm. 10 out of 10. Excellent. Show off. I just want to cover one more, because there's one that's really useful for parents, and it's x-ray. All parents should have an x-ray flag. So x-ray, this basically means stop carrying out your intentions and watch for my signals. So if you wave this at your kids, it basically says... Stop it and look at me. So there you go. As you know, it's not scripted on this channel and we don't rehearse things. But any comments about things which aren't, or any points you want to make about fun with flags or fun things you know about flags or different things from different countries, do let us know. This is now several days later we've been sitting here doing this. But one of the things that I wanted to show, because my daughter, we were just talking about marine biology related stuff, my daughter is going to be going off and she counts fish for a living basically, and she's going to be going off counting sharks soon. Now, the flag that you fly when you're um, researching sharks has actually changed over the last 20 years. So do you want to hold up and we'll show you. Back in the days of Hans House and Jacques Cousteau, this is what you would have had. Okay, you can see how dated that is. But nowadays, this is the flag that you have because we're much more used, you know, we understand that sharks are friendly creatures. Anyway, that's it. You can put that away now. Um, and see you next month where it will be putting the hatch on. Yes, so next month we'll be putting the hatch on. You've got no idea what I'm going to put on those flags. No, I'm very excited. I'm actually going to watch a video now. Are you really? That'll be a first. Right, okay. See you next month. Bye-bye.